Rendering is the process of generating an image from a 3D model or scene. The rendering process combines geometry, textures, shading, light, reflection, and so on to give the final appearance to the project. Model rendering software use various techniques to achieve realism. Techniques such as global illumination, PBR shading, ray tracing, proxy instancing, and now mostly, every render engine is capable of producing stunning images. Which is great because this means whatever render engine you use, you're gonna be able to achieve great results. But the thing is, the devil is in the details. And this can make people choose a software over another or a render engine over another. Multiple industries use rendering for different purposes, such as prototyping, design validation, client presentation, marketing, public awareness, and so on and so forth. The most common industries that use 3D rendering are architectural visualization, VFX, VR, video game development, engineering and product design, marketing, advertising, and many, many other fields. A concrete showcase is, for example, IKEA having a complete CGI catalog and real estate selling 3D models to clients, CGI in movies, rendering of products for marketing, and so on. Rendering is omnipresent in all media in all forms and still images and animations. 3ds Max is one of the most popular 3D software used for rendering. It is the top choice for ArcViz, CAD, and engineer firms, but it is also very popular in VFX, game development, advertising, and so on. There is a little more to rendering than choosing a renderer. Some core features will help you organize and tweak your scenes before rendering, which plays a huge role in the final results. We will assume that you have already a complete model or scene, so we will only explore features related to rendering. To start rendering in 3ds Max, if you have used another program to model, you have first to import it to Max, and fortunately, it is compatible with a huge number of formats. For architects, for example, we have Revit, SketchUp, and AutoCAD, which are natively supported. The same is true for CATIA, FreeE, and SOLIDWORKS when it comes to the engineering field. If you want to render simulations done in Houdini for example, VDB, Alembic, and USD are supported in addition to the standard formats such as OBJ and FBX. You are not just limited to images. Max allows you to render animations, whether it is a studio visit or an ad or a product. You can animate cameras using keyframes, add special effects with particles, or use rigs to animate characters and vehicles. The Slate Material Editor is your shading system. It is node-based, and it is very flexible with a long list of materials, shaders, specialized maps, and it supports PBR workflows, but keep in mind that every renderer has its own supported materials. And to light your materials, 3ds Max provides two types of lights, photometric and standard. Standard lights are generic lights without any real-world value, while photometric lights use photometric values that enable you to more accurately define lights as they would be in real life or using IES files. You can also use the sun and sky system with its geographic and time features. On the other hand, HDR Studio lets you create and edit HDR maps. As you create and edit lights on the HDRI map, you will instantly see your render update in 3ds Max with the new lighting. It includes a large library of photograph studio light sources and complete studio setups. Inside the shader editor, OSL maps are supported. Three in particular are useful for controlling environments. For example, the background switcher OSL allows you to use a map for lighting, but the other one is used for display. The HDRI OSL allows you to control HDRI maps and HDRI lights. OSL creates advanced lighting setups and simulates the use of real photographic equipment, which helps you generate realistic results. Other small scripts like ArcVis tools Quick Light Generator, Backdrop Generator, and Droplet Light Generator can really speed up your workflow. We talked about these scripts, and we created a full video about them if you want to check them out. Now, when rendering complex projects, you need to manage your scenes. The Layer Manager is really helpful, especially for ArcVis and complex mechanical assemblies. There are also robust management options like outlier filtering, various grouping systems, naming lists, lights, camera sequencers, and so on. For example, Pulse Scene Manager is an excellent scene manager plugin for Max if you have several complex projects to render especially. Sometimes you have to render an image but with multiple variants, like an interior with different furniture sets or a car with multiple paint jobs. For this you've got state sets. You can record changes to your scene like objects position, materials, and lighting and save them as a new state. Also you have the ability to quickly display and render them. 
A more powerful option is render stacks. It allows you to manage objects. In addition to selection sets, render passes, multiple cameras, lighting sets, exposure, background, SDRI, etc. Rendering variants is really simple with this tool, which is great. For rendering animations, network rendering is well integrated natively with the Max Backburner Manager or as always using a plugin. In this case, Pulse also offers a good render manager. When you need to create some materials from scratch, fast rendering workflow requires libraries. You want to import your model, apply ready materials like your scene, then render it and iterate as fast as possible. For materials, most render engines come with their own pre-made libraries. For example, Corona, V-Ray and F-Storm have extended one. In addition to that, you have Kyo scans for high realism scan materials for V-Ray, Quixel scan textures and Substance Designer database. To organize your assets, unfortunately Autodesk 3ds Max asset library is discontinued. You have to choose between many external asset management software. Two good options are K-Studio Project Manager and Design Connected Connector. You can prepare pre-made files with studio setups, lights, models, and drag and drop then hit render. When it comes to rendering engines, there is a long list of renderers for 3ds Max, so we have just to talk about the most popular ones. For ArcViz, you have Maxwell Render, which uses an unbiased spectral ray tracing that is designed to simulate light and materials in the most precise way. On the other hand, Corona Renderer delivers high-quality, physically-based shading for production rendering, with a greater ease of use compared to the other render engines. We also have F-Storm Render, which is available for Macs only. It is one of the most important GPU renderers with architectural 3D artists due to its speed, high quality, and simplicity. Octane Render and Redshift are two of the fastest GPU renderers that are frequently used in product design, advertising, and TV ads. On the other hand, Arnold is the default render engine in Max. It is an advanced ray tracing renderer built on the demands of feature length animation and view effect, which shows how powerful it is. V-Ray is the most used render engine for Max. It excels in all fields, such as ArcViz, VFX, product design, and so on. Its high quality combined with speed and features makes it among the favorites when it comes to rendering artists. For producing technical illustrations, pen and ink drawings, tune renders, or any non-photorealistic rendering, Final Tune and PSoft Pencil Plus are the plugins of choice. Other render engines for Max include Indigo Render, Radeon Pro Render, Cycles, Appleased, and the default scanline. Max can be considered a powerful rendering platform. It is compatible with a ton of render engines and has a robust tool set to animate, manage scenes, manage passes, and network rendering. It also has access to vast libraries of light, materials, and scan textures. If you choose Max for rendering work, you're gonna be able to do a lot of things, especially professionally in different industries that we talked about. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.